In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The title for this afternoon's homily comes from Isaiah chapter 7, verse 9. This is a scripture passage worth praying with. Unless your faith is firm, you shall not be firm. When our supply lines are secure and our Father showers us with his grace, our hearts are filled with Jesus. And he is able to confirm and strengthen us in our journey, following Jesus being guided by the Holy Spirit is strength. It's confidence. My life is in the Lord's hands. During this past week, I received a confirmation from the Lord as I prayed with the collect, with the opening prayer for this afternoon's Holy Mass. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Deepening, the Lord God is offering for each and every one of you an opportunity to experience your faith and your love in Jesus to deepen. Whether you're just starting out and beginning, whether you're an intermediary or whether you've been loving the Lord for a long time, he's offering to each and every one of us an opportunity to experience a deepening of our faith and our love for Jesus. He's such a good and loving father. He wants to nurture the gifts that he has given us, and he wants to keep safe that which he has done. We transition now to three repetitios, so for those of you that were here at the beginning of my ministry as pastor here at Our Lady of Good Counsel, you'll recall that I shared with you that an important part of my monastic formation was repetitio, repetition. It's allowing you to hear something one, two, even three times. Why? So that you can make it your own. So that you would able from your own heart you'd be able to break open and share that message which you have received from Jesus. The first repetitio, Jesus is worthy. We turn our attention to the second reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The letter to the Hebrews is an exhortation for you to fix your gaze upon Jesus. The more you fix your gaze upon him, the more you gaze into his eyes, the more your heart and your mind will overflow with his praise. Why? Because of who he is. Because of all that he has done for you. Because of all that he desires for you. He is mighty God. He is Savior. And he is so approachable. Jesus is so approachable. This is one of my favorite insights from our Archbishop's letter, Unleash the Gospel. The Archbishop reflects that from that moment that Jesus became man in the womb of the Virgin Mary, that this is amazing and exciting news because it means we can now see God and we can touch God. We can hear his voice and we can be touched by him. Jesus is so approachable. And the hope is that each and every one of you in your own way, from your own heart, would be able to say those words, Jesus is worthy. He's worthy of all my praise. The second repetitio is that overarching theme of the Marine Corps and the Army. So if under the 12 years of the leadership of Father John, it was the Marine Corps where you were fighting battles and Jesus was claiming hearts and claiming territory, this initial season of my leadership is one of the army coming in. We're going to be stabilizing, we're going to be securing, we're going to be checking out the logistics, and we're going to be expanding those supply lines. And we're doing this with enthusiasm. I don't want you to have this notion that this assessing and securing that Father Anthony, I gotta walk around with some clipboards and pins and doing check marks. No, we are so excited about our mission to offer everybody in our community a life-changing encounter with Jesus 
that's going to provide the enthusiasm and the joy of this initial season of assessing and securing. And we're going to do that by our supply lines. Hopefully by now you can say them in order, prayer, word, and sacrament. Let's take an example from today's gospel, this teaching of Jesus our Savior, how when we pray with it, in the context of receiving his most holy body and blood in the Eucharist, prayer, word, and sacrament, these are the ways that our hearts and minds are filled with Jesus. In today's gospel, as we allow the Lord to love us, to lay down his life for us, as we welcome that love, that presence, that power into our hearts and lives, we see that Jesus is calling us to love others as he loves us. That's the Lord's call on your life right now. The person whose hand you're holding, who you're sitting next to, Jesus is calling you to love the people in your life the same way he loves you. Do you see why our prayer is so important? How can you go a day without praying, without being with Jesus, without hearing his voice, without allowing him to love you? When you and I do not allow Jesus to love us, we can't do that which he's asking of us. We can't love those people in our lives the way that he loves us if we're neglecting our life of prayer. In this gospel, Jesus teaches us that this is the first circle of love, to love the people we can see and touch. But we are called to love everybody with the heart of God, the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. So this following Jesus and being guided by Jesus necessarily means that our hearts and our minds grow and they're expanded. And we sense this call of the Lord to love not just those people that love us, but to love all the people that the Lord God brings into our, our life with the very love and heart of God. We transition now to talk about the how, how we're going to live out this season of assessing and securing and fulfilling the mission that the Lord has entrusted us with. The first answer is gifts. One of the things that Jesus teaches us about our Father is that he's this amazing and good Father that loves to give good gifts to his children. So when you listen to the words of Jesus and you pray with them, he's showing you how to live your life, that in every moment of every day, you and I can turn to our Father and seek to receive the good gifts he has pre prepared for us for that moment. And so the way that we're going to assess, the way that we're going to secure, is we're going to be seeking to receive the gifts that our Father has in store for us. We're going to spend time with those gifts. We're going to share those gifts. We're going to nurture and we're going to grow those gifts. Many of us have had the experience where the Lord God speaks to us, a light goes off, but then we move on. We don't spend any time. Jesus is asking us to spend time with the gifts he gives us, to share them with the people in our lives, to nurture and to grow them. The second how is through circles of influence. So this is an insight that I gained from the amazing parish conference, and it's basically this. At the center of everything we do here at Our Lady of Good Counsel is Jesus. I, together with my leadership team, we're going to fix our gaze upon him and we're going to listen. Jesus is going to give gifts. We're going to spend time. We're going to share those gifts with the parish team. That's the next circle of influence. The men and women that Father Anthony and I find so much delight working side by side with, whether they be at the parish office or in our parish school, once we've shared the gift with the parish team, it's going to be all the men and women in leadership positions here at Our Lady of Good Council. You might not believe this, but I come out of every meeting with a smile on my face because the Lord God has raised up outstanding leaders, outstanding lay men and, and women who have assumed leadership positions in the various ministries here in our parish. They're the next circle of influence. We want to share with them the gifts. We want to build them up, help them to grow. The next circle of influence is all of you that are actively engaged in the life of the parish. The next circle of influence is those of you that 
you come to Mass on Sunday, but that's about it. And you're not quite sure what you ought to do or what you could do or what you'd like to do. You're that next circle of influence. Once we're able to reach you and to set your hearts on fire with love, then we're going to turn our gaze outwards to the city of Plymouth. And all I can say is watch out, Plymouth. Because when we are unified with Jesus, we're unified one another, nothing's going to be able to stand against the Lord. The third and the final how is this season of listening. This is Jesus' church. He's calling us to listen, to hear, and to see. As Jesus places something before us, or places something in our hands, we're going to pick it up and get to work with it. Nothing can replace this dedication to prayer, to humble listening before the Lord. As your Father in Christ, I ask all of you to engage in this season of listening, to spend time with Jesus. What is he saying to you personally? What is he saying to you as a family? And what is he saying to us as a parish family? Let us be confident that this season of listening is going to bear mighty fruits for the kingdom and for the Lord. To conclude, we cast our gaze now upon the mother of our Savior, our patroness, our Lady of Good Counsel. We have entered into this period of preparation to celebrate our 100th anniversary, 100 years of Jesus Christ being proclaimed and lived here in the city of Plymouth through our parish family of Our Lady of Good Counsel. And during this year, we cast our gaze upon the mother of our Savior because she offers us a living example of humility and faith. What did Mary do? She listened to Jesus. St. Luke tells us time and time again that Mary kept the words of Jesus in her heart. She prayed with the words of Jesus. She pondered the words of Jesus so that when Mary spoke or acted, she was always boldly proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. This year, preparation for this amazing celebration, we hope to learn from Mary to do that exact same thing, to keep the words of Jesus in our heart, to be filled with Jesus, to ponder his words, so that when you and I act or speak, just like Mother Mary, we might boldly proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. Name the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.